superb studio audience, welcome to this edition of Bullseye. We've got another letter here, we'd like to read it to you. It's from R.W. Palmer of Kenilworth in Warwickshire. Now, this guy really is observant. Being an ardent fan of your Bullseye programme, I'm somewhat perturbed as to why Bully has not got a ring in his nose, right? <laughs> because he, apparently it's an offence, he says here, to keep a bull without one over three months old, right? And he thinks as well it could improve his appearance. Well, now listen, we took your advice, we got this letter some time ago, we took your advice, and this is what he looked like. Have a look at this. <laughs> now, the problem, the problem wasn't with what he looked like, it was we rely on his sound, you see, and when we put his sound for, for the end, when the contestants run out of time and things. So, but when we put the ring in, this is what he sounded like. I mean, we couldn't have that, could we? So, I'm sorry about this, Mr. Farmer from Kenilworth. We had to take the ring out, and we've got him back to normal again. Let's see. What... Thank you, sir. Let's see if we can do well with our contestants tonight on Bullseye. How are you, Les? Not so bad, Jim. Nice to see you. Great. Welcome to Birmingham. Thank Welcome you. to Central Studios. You're from Liverpool? Yes. Right. What do you do? You're a county player, Les? Yes. Right, for all those of you again who think that these dark players, you could do better than a county player. What do you do for a living? Uh, I clean the streets of Liverpool, in particular speak, with a brush and curl. So you're the nephew of Dot. How are you, yeah. Dot? Nice I'm very well, thank you. Lovely to see you. Thanks okay. for coming down from Liverpool. You're the brains of the outfit, right? Oh. <laughs> she did very well this afternoon. We had a rehearsal. You know the different questions tonight, don't you, Dot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get this depth of knowledge? You're really into quizzes, aren't you? Well, I like quizzes and I read quite a lot. You read a lot, yeah. Yes. So that could come in handy tonight with the with the books and words and spellings. Could mm. be a good help to you tonight, couldn't it? We move on to Pontypool down in South Wales now. Hiya, Steve. Hey, Jim. Nice to see you. <laughs> Steve Horseman and Dave Parker. You've both got the same same job, haven't you? Yeah. I didn't believe this, but <laughs> you're both grave diggers, aren't you? That's right, Jim. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, really, that, it's a fairly... Serious subject is this. I mean, we shouldn't laugh, but I mean, my my reaction was just the same as the audience's. You did graves for the council. That's right. Do you work together? Well, we work in the same gang, like, and you're not always digging the same grave. But how many how many do you need to dig one? Two. You start at each end, do you? Uh, no. No. <laughs> you take it in turns, but one's got to be on the side for safety reasons. Dave. Evening, Jim. Tell me, you you this is a lovely story. You were an industrial chemist. This is true and you packed it into the grave digging. Oh. Wow, well, the glamour of the job appealed to me, I must admit. <laughs> dear, dear me. We've got Martin and Pat at the end. You're from Sunderland. Martin, marine engineer. Yep. On the oil rigs. Yep, that's right. But not, as we would think, in the North Sea. I've worked in the North Sea, but uh, more often than not, overseas. Overseas, like Brazil and Yep, at Thailand. the moment. Yep. What a boring business, going to Brazil. <laughs> and you could be grave digging, if you... <laughs> And we've got Pat. Now, the, the lovely story about you two guys, you, you, were, you were pot boys together, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Do you know in the audience what a pot boy is? One or two of you know. In fact, that's it, you got it. Collect the glasses in the pubs, didn't you? In the Workingmen's Club. In the Workingmen's Club. Mm -hmm. How long did you do that for? Too long. Too long? Did, did you get, what well, you started early though, didn't you? You can be honest now. <laughs> 13 years You started yeah. at 13, told them you were 15, didn't yeah. you? 16. 16? You cheated three years. And what did they pay you for that, can you remember? More than a paper boy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win with these guys tonight. Nice to have you all here. You've got a superb audience to support you tonight. We hope you do very well. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> okay, let's play balls. Questions in the first round. Thirty pounds each. Look at our brains sitting there. Remember your bonus lights, all three of you. As soon as you know the answer, press your bonus light. Here we go. Dot, choose a subject for Les. Uh, faces, please. Come on, Les. Faces, please. Fifty. Good start for you there, Dot. Fifty pounds you've got. For another thirty pounds, Dot, look at your monitor. You first. Tell us who that is. Uh, Sue Cook. Good girl. Good girl, Dot. Fine. Thirty pounds you've got. No problem. Dave for Steve. Sport, please, Jim. Sport, Stevie. Fifty. No problem. Fifty pounds you've got. Another 30, if you can tell me, Dave. In which sport are the terms albatross and eagle used? 
Golf, Jim. Golf, good man. You took your time as well, didn't you? You breathed in. All right, good man. Pat for Martin. Britain, please, Jim. Britain, come on, Martin. 50. No problem. For another 30 pounds, Pat, which political party leader stood down in 1988 after 12 years in the post? David Steele. Good man. <clears throat> Which gives us all the couples 80 pounds apiece. Well done. <laughs> all right. 50 pounds a question now. All to play for. The categories left are the ones that are lit. Choose one for Les Dot. Uh, show business, please. Well, from Liverpool, why not? Yes, showbiz. Let's have it. 50. Two stars of the television series Bread left the show early in 1989. Name one of them, Dot. Uh, Joey, Peter Howard. Good girl. Just for a laugh, can you, do you know, remember the other one? Uh, Avaline. Yes, well done, good. Excellent. You're looking good there, 180 pounds, well played. Move on, Dave. Spelling, please, Jim. Spelling me like, Steve. 50. 50 pounds you've got. Another 50 you've got coming, Dave, if you can tell me this. Please spell conscious, meaning aware. Take your time. C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S. -S Check it with bullet. C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S -S gives you a further 50 pounds. Can we keep it up? Come on, Pat. Uh, history, please, Jim. History, Martin. 50. 50 pounds again. Another 50 pounds, Pat. Which American brothers made the first controlled flights in a power-driven aeroplane in 1903. The Wright Brothers. The Wright Brothers gives everybody £180 apiece. <laughs> All right, questions £100 each now. Now it starts. But look at the categories. The dark players really have got, got to get their acts together because one or two are isolated. Dot. Words, please. Words, my love. Come on, Les. Words. 50. 50 pounds you've got. Which word describes someone who hates women? There's no light on it. Nobody's pressurising you, you're all right. And you know it, Doc, honestly. <laughs> Run out of time and no light came on. Misogynist. Now then, let's see what happens now. Dave for Steve. Books, please, Jim. I don't think he wanted books at all. Fifty. You've got it, however. Which American dramatist wrote The Glass Menagerie, A Streetcar Named Desire, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof? Tennessee Williams. Good man. You've surprised yourself. Good man. Whew. Right. Well done, because Dot knew that one as well. All right. Pat for Martin. Places, please, Jim. Places. Here we go. He's got to get the subject. 50. And he has done. You've played extremely well, lads. You really have. Pat. For a further hundred pounds, which town in the Falklands was the scene of the Argentine surrender at the end of the conflict? There's a light on. It's got to be worth a guess, has that, Pat? Goose Green. It's not. We can offer it to Dot for a hundred pounds. Port Stanley. Port Stanley gives you a one hundred pound bonus. Excellent. Gives us the scores. Look at this. At the end of game one, Dot and Les with three hundred and thirty pounds. Dave and Steve with £330, and Pat and Martin, £230. Well played. Well played indeed. An excellent start to the evening. We move on now, which is where the dart player really comes into his own. The three dart players compete in three rounds of darts against each other to get for the partner a question. And the value of that question is the winning score. It's pounds for points, so any one couple can go through. Over we go to Tony. OK, lads. Twenty. Trouble five. Trouble twenty. Ninety-five. Okay, Steve. Ninety-five. The score. It's one. Double top. And twenty. Sixty-one. But it's ninety-five. You need to beat Martin. 20, 5, 20, 45. So the first round to less. Dot, this can take you nicely into the lead. It's worth 95 pounds to you. Listen to the question carefully. 
on a long playing record label, you will see 33 and a third RPM. What do the initials stand for, Dot? I don't know. My dear, there's a light on there. Dave, can you tell me? Revolutions per minute. Jim. Revolutions per minute, Dave, gives you £61, which gives us £330 for Dot and Les, Dave and Steve with £391, and £230 for Pat and Martin. Back to Tony. Thank you, right, Wallace. Twenty. Twenty. Another twenty. Sixty. Twice, right, Steve. Sixty. Treble twenty. Five. And one. Sixty-six. So there you have it, Martin. Sixty-six to me. One. Treble 20, 66, so that's a tie, Jim. So what we do here, boys, we want Steve and Martin to throw again, in that order, and the highest score gets the question which is worth 66 pounds. OK. It's 20. 20. Another 20, 60. That's the score, Martin, 60. 20. Treble 20 is enough, and that gives you the round mark. Okay, so your partner got you through nicely there, Pat. And this question is worth £66 to you. All right, Pat. Yeah. Which film actor married Madonna in 1985? Sean Penn. Sean Penn gives you £66. Gives us the scores at the end of round two. £330 for Dot and Les. Dave and Steve, £391. And coming up nicely, Pat and Martin with £296. <laughs> Right, you are, Les. It's all on this final round. 20. Treble 20. And 20, 100. <laughs> Steve, that's the score, 100. One. One. And 20, that's 22. So, Martin, 100 to beat. Twenty. One. And twenty forty one, the final round to Les. Dot, this will take you through to Bullish Prize Board. It's worth a hundred pounds. We'll give you four hundred and thirty pounds, which will win. Take your time over the answer. Here we go. For one hundred pounds, which canal connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans? The Suez Canal. I can offer it for forty-one pounds to Pat. Panama Canal. The Panama Canal gets you forty-one pounds, which gives us Dot and Les with three hundred and thirty pounds, Dave and Steve with three hundred and ninety-one pounds, and Pat and Martin with three hundred and thirty-seven pounds. So we've got to say cheerio to Dot and Les and Pat and Martin. In you come. <laughs> Oh, listen, you've been marvellous. You've been a, a treat to have on the programme. Now then, what was the name of that canal? <laughs> <laughs> well, Betty Lynch, you have to resolve. Thank you. £330, so it's been worth you coming down, hasn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Eh? An extra scrub on the streets for us next week. Brilliant. All right. Brilliant. And 337 for Pat and Martin. You've been a treat to have on the programme. <laughs> See in two minutes. I'm counting this lot out. <laughs> Okay, you start. We have. We're doing a spot of decorating, so I've made a delicious spaghetti bolognese yeah, to keep us going. We love ragout sauce, especially as it takes over a pound and a half of tomatoes to make every jar. 